mid-wing fried chicken and all that cost you know how much? eight dollars Xiao. so hello hello you're watching Greg's B Eats and we're here at Golden Mile Food Centre to talk about Wadang now it is hard enough to find hawker stalls that are good in one dish but Wadang, which specializes in Malay cuisine, manages to have impressively high standards across many dishes. They've been based at Golden Mao Food Center since 2005. The store sells Malay dishes like Mirubus, Misoto, Gado Gado, Tahu Goreng and Satay. It started by Asman Kamis, who is in his late 50s. He left his job at PSA International in 2003 to sell Tahu Goreng and Ipok Ipok, Malay curry puffs, in a coffee shop. In 2004, he joined his cousin's sati stall in Golden Mao Food Centre, took over the reins a year later and started Wadang. So come, let's have a taste. Hi, uh, can I have one uh, tahu goreng and then uh, satay? Five chicken, five mutton, five beef? Five, five, five. Huh? Uh, five, five, five. All having here, yeah. Uh, my comeback? Uh? Ten minutes. Ten minutes, uh, okay. How much? Eh? 14. 14. Thank you. Eh? Okay, there are two dishes which I ordered and they are to me the best that this stall has to offer. The tahu goreng and the satay are the dishes which actually trump the rest of them. Now. Okay, uh, now the tahu goreng, what is it? It is deep fried bean curd with chopped cucumbers and bean sprouts and it is drenched in a sauce which has got shallots, garlic, chilli, shrimp paste, soy sauce and tamarind juice. Okay, so let's try a piece first. See, the sauce looks pretty damn thick. Oh my god. So good. Every time I come to this store and I eat this dish, I'm like... It comes sweet, slightly spicy but with a light tanginess to balance it out. The flavours are very powerful, it is thick, it is robust but yet, even with all these flavours, right, you can still taste the natural taste of the peanuts in the thick sauce. It costs 3 50 but you can actually feed too because it is so big, pretty huge. And the tofu is soft, it's got a bit of that soft fried crispness to it, you know, which is what it looks like just the tofu. The bean sprouts and the cucumbers come nice and crunchy. I mean to my mind, this is easily the best tahu goreng that I've tasted in Singapore, lah, okay? I'm willing to vouch my reputation on that. Okay, next, the satay. Test, test. Okay, um, I'm back here at Golden Mouth Food Centre for a second time uh, to try the satay again. Because I've tried the satay before and it was good, then I tried the satay again during my last recording and it was... The quality was a bit shaky, so I'm basically double confirming the quality. So this will be my third or fourth time actually trying the satay, just to make sure that it is actually good. I really ordered, so let's just wait. Okay, I just got the satay. I ordered again five sticks of beef, five sticks of mutton, five sticks of chicken. Uh, let me film to show you that. This is how it looks like. There we go. So this is as fresh as it gets and I'm going to try it right now. So trying the beef. Mm. The beef rather meaty as opposed to super soft. Not as soft as it could be, but at least it's not dry. So there are nice herb bits on top. It is a bit overly sweet. The beef unfortunately is not a strength. It can be good, it can be so-so, and it depends on what cut of meat you get. Okay, now trying the chicken. got a very nice soft texture. The flavouring is not so strong. It's got a bit of fat or skin if you're lucky. It's got a slightly tangy sheen along the sweetness and it's not too sweet. And it's got nice hot bits. It's got nice occasional burn bits. And it is not as sweet as how a lot of Malay satay stalls do it. The mutton. Mm. Mm. Yes. The meat textures are softer and it's going to be a little bit more fat rich because there's a piece of fat in between every stick. 
the flavor is still on the sweet side, but it is not as sweet as the beef. At least today, lah. The seasonings will obviously vary from day to day. By the way, if you want to know the difference between beef and mutton, right? I'll show you this. This is the beef, and this is the mutton. And you can tell because there's that piece of fat right over there. And that distinguishes the mutton from the beef. So, I'm trying the sahati sauce. Looks quite thick. And if I'm right, it's also not as flavoured. Mm. The sati sauce is um, it's not overly sweet or oily. There is instead an emphasis on the taste and the soft crunch of the peanuts. The sati sauce is one of the best things about this place. Eh? Eating it together with the mutton satay. The sati sauce actually taints the sweetness a bit. Because the sati sauce has a lighter flavour than the sati itself. So everything balances out. So, in short, I will say the sati is very good. But you need to eat it rather quickly. If you leave it, it's going to be not as soft. Lah. It's going to dry out. The satay here is very good. It's just that it can be a little inconsistent. So better. Okay, I'm back here for a third day to try wedang again. This time I'm trying the misoto. Or rather, this time the soto with long tong instead. So this is what it looks like. So it's basically chicken stock plus it has got chicken meat, some bean sprouts, some rice cakes and there is a burger deal inside there which is kind of like a potato cake. It's got some chopped coriander on top. As for the carbohydrate, right, you can choose to have rice cakes or you can choose to have yellow noodles or bihun. It's really up to you. Lah. So you also have the option of adding tripe inside. You also have a very killer chili with soy sauce dip on the side. And this is extremely potent. It's made of chili padi, so it is extremely hot. Before that, I'll show you what the misoto looks like from a top-down perspective, which is something like this. There we go. First, trying the soup. Very comforting. It's got a nice, complex, savoury stock flavour. It's got a bit of oil richness floating on top. There's a bit of a spice taste, but not too much. The stock was the main flavour. It's a bit rounded, it's a bit on the saltier side. Um, it is not the world's best risotto stock, but it is up there. La. It is definitely up there. You can tell that they're actually using real good stock here. So there are some chicken pieces, Chinese coriander, some bean sprouts, some long tong, rice cake, the burger deal, which is a fried potato cake. Biting into the burger deal. Mm. It's nice, but I've tasted more flavour packed ones. Uh. That said, this isn't half bad, it's really nice. Nice and soft, it is a bit oil rich. It could do with a little bit more of a flavouring. Uh. But if you drink it with the soup, right, it should go very well. The rice cake. Yeah. The compacted rice cake. The rice is firm, the rice is not mushy at all. If you want a richer flavour, out for the yellow noodles. You've got a little bit more egg richness inside. And the chicken. Shredded chicken. So obviously the addition of the coriander is going to add a little bit of herb crunch and flavour. And the fried onion, a little bit of um, soft sweet onion richness to it. So conclusion, the soto broth is good. It's got a bit less of a spice flavour, but the stock is still fairly robust. And a burger is actually included in the price, which is nice. But actually, if you calculate the price right, it actually comes up to be the same as other Malay stalls. Lah. You know, um, $3.50 and then you add a burger deal, $0.50, cents, it's $4. Here, it's $4 automatically. So, if you want a little bit more spice, savoury punch, you add this. It's very, very spicy, so I'm only going to take a little bit. Just a little bit. Whoa! Ah! Woo! Okay, it's spicy as hell. Since it is grated chili, or rather chili padi, in dark soy sauce, and maybe a little bit of light soy sauce, I'm not too sure. So if you add this inside the soup, right, it provides a little bit of sweetness, a bit of um, savouriness, and a whole lot of chili spice. So I'm gonna add a little bit inside. And it should up the flavour much more. Mmm, wow. 
The other thing about the burgadel is that some people, what they do is that they actually leave the burgadel inside the soup so that it gets really, really soft and then they sort of like break it apart and it mixes with the soup. So you get this really thick, slightly floury soup, but it's very nice. Okay, done. I think I'm not yet full, so I'm going to be ordering one more dish from the stall. So, see you in a bit. Okay, I've ordered the mee rebus here. I'll show you what it looks like. There you go. Yellow noodles with sweet potato gravy, and then it's got then it's got some fried tofu, it's got some sliced green chilli, got some fried onions here, it's got a bit of a sweet soy sauce here, and some coriander, it's got a boiled egg, and then it has got half a lime. Okay, the Mirabu's gravy, I already talked about how it's made in a previous vlog, but very briefly, it's made with a mix of sweet potato, curry and spices, stock, preserved bean paste and dried shrimp. Trying the gravy alone. Mm. Mm. Nicely balanced. Nice thick gravy, savoury, rounded stock flavours. It's got a bit of spice flavour as well. Sweet but it's not overly sweet. In fact, it's just very slightly sweet only. I'm going to put in the lime. Basically, freshen up the flavour a little bit more. Try the noodles. Mm. Wonderful. Noodles are soft but firm. You dig into a bit of the chilli. It's a raw green chilli, so it's got that chilli crunch. A bit of a herb crunch. Adds a bit of spiciness. The fried tofu will give it a bit of um, fried richness. There's tauge. Again, we're giving it a little bit of crunch. And there's one whole boiled egg for more protein besides the fried tofu. I like the fact that there's a sweetness to the gravy, but it's not too sweet. And the stock flavours are showcased a little bit more. It may not be like the top meal boost I've tasted in my life, but it's definitely up there. Lah. Definitely top five. Okay, finished. The mee soto and the meal boost on my last visit wasn't as good then, but this time around it is really spot on. So, I've tasted the tahu goreng, I've tasted the sake, I've tasted the mirubus, and I've tasted the misoto. And so, there's just one dish left the gado gado. I'll see you in a few days later. Okay, hi, I'm back here at Golden Mouth to try Wudang's last dish, which is the gado gado. Something like this. So it is kind of like a salad of sorts. It is a Malay style salad. It's got eggs, it's got ball cabbage, it's got tempe, which is a preserved dried bean curd. It's got some kropok. And of course it has got some ketupat, which is rice cakes. It's got some fried potato. It's also got some fried tofu as well. So this dish is actually very good for vegetarians because there's no meat at all, but not so good for vegans because there's actually egg inside. And the sauce which they put on top is the same sauce which they use for satay, which is a spicy peanut sauce of sorts. So the only vegetables they use here is actually blanched cabbage. In some other gado gado recipes, they will use like long beans or they will use uh, bean sprouts or tomato or cucumber and sort of thing. Like. So this is kind of like a stripped down version, which is alright because it's only 350. Okay, so taking a bite. That looks pretty awesome. Mm, oh. The tofu is fried and it's nice and chewy and crispy but it's got a soft crispiness. Uh. The potato is also softer with a little bit more of oil richness as well. The boiled egg is boiled egg, you know. The rice cake is firm and the tempeh is nice and crunchy. Um, the boiled cabbage is boiled but I wish it was perhaps a little bit less blanched. The sauce itself, again the sauce is really a big highlight here because it's not too sweet and you can actually taste the peanuts. It's spicy but it's very lightly spicy and it's oil rich as well. So the gado gado, it's nice that they have got enough fried items in here so that it doesn't actually make the dish boring at all. So the tofu is fried, the tempeh is actually still very nicely crunchy and the potato, normally they put plain boiled potatoes but over here, they actually fry the potatoes so there's a little bit more oil richness here. Wonderful. And these things, the shrimp cracker, the prawn cracker, is basically some form of dried prawn and starch mixed together and they fry it like this. Mm. It obviously adds more crunchiness and more oil richness into the dish as well. So, 
So I suppose Wadang's gado gado is kind of like a slightly crispier and it's up with a little bit more oil richness from all the extra fried items over here and it's not too sweet. The gado gado is nice. I just wish it had a little bit more vegetable variety inside here. Mm, okay, hold on. If there were more dishes like this, right, I wouldn't mind going vegetarian full time. And so that was a pretty in-depth look at the Wadang and all the dishes which they have. But as I said, it is one of those rare Malay stores where every dish is actually well done. Normally they do one or two things very well done and then the rest are okay, not bad. And plus it is still quite value for money. The best of the lot obviously is the tahu goreng. It is literally hands down the best in Singapore. The satay, only because it is kind of like a lighter cake on what Malay style satay is and I really appreciate that because for a lot of Malay stalls they tend to overemphasize on the sweetness and sometimes it just gets too much lah. so thanks for watching another episode of Great Speed Eats where we eat show the whole of Singapore if you like this episode give a like, subscribe and share this content and I'll see you in the next one for more eating bye bye Oh, Jay, oh, uh, Tia Lia. Okay. Oh, thank you. How are you? Hello. How are you? Hi. What's your name? Uh, my name is Jamil. Huh? Jamil. Jamil. You meet Jamil over here. <laughs> he actually runs his stall over there. El Bismi. El Bismi Cafe. El Bismi, Bismi Cafe. Oh, okay. Next time when you're in Golden Mall, you can come and visit this guy. How much? Eh? Oh, it's 130. 130, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Okay, bye-bye. Okay.